Welcome to this free immigration help channel. Today is October 3rd, 2023, and we are getting into the volume 166 of me answering your immigration related questions. As always, before beginning this video, I'm gonna mention, as I mentioned in every video, I am not an immigration attorney. This is not legal advice. All the information provided in these videos on this channel are directly from official government sources like USAS and of course the Department of State with their visa bulletin. So let's start this video with the very first comment question from Emit Pok Harel 1751. I am documentarily qualified on F2B visa category in August 2021. Awesome. Congratulations on being documentarily qualified and waiting visa interview appointment date. At that same time, can I apply for M1 visa? Well, M1 is, is um, in the student category. It's like a non-academic uh, studies visa. Because I am very frustrated to wait F2B visa interview appointment date. I mean, so yes, absolutely 100%. You can definitely do that. In fact, I always recommend in, uh, in these videos, you know, if you do have a family reunification petition, and you know that you will be waiting for quite some time. And I mean, you, I mean, you are already documentarily qualified and you've been documentarily qualified now for over two years now. So I am thinking you should be pretty close to the interview, but let me take a look at the F2B just uh, to see how long you have left. Approximately, again, this is rough estimates. Keep that in mind because, because visa bulletin, you know, every month it might move, it might not move. It's really hard to predict it, but if we look at the graph A right now, since you are already documentarily qualified, so we're looking at the graph A final action dates. F to B right now is September 2015. So if you let me know when your priority date is, for example, let's say if you are, let's say January 2016, let's say your priority date, theoretically, right? Just to give you an example so that you can do similar rough estimates for yourself. Let's say your priority date is January 2016. If we look at the graph A right now, it's showing September 2015, the end of September 2015, which means that it is about October, November, December, and then January, about three, four months away from your priority date being current. All right. If you're in March 2016, then obviously it's like seven months away from your priority date being current. So right around that time, that's when you can expect your interview. Once your priority date becomes current, U.S. Embassy schedules the interview. Okay, so if you want to get some rough estimates, let me know the priority date. And that goes for everyone. If you're asking for estimates, I need three things. Priority date, um, category, one of the family preference categories, and then the chargeability area would be helpful. But to answer your question, Amit, so yes, absolutely. Keep in mind that M1 is a non-immigrant visa. So when you go to the embassy uh, for the interview for the M1 visa, be prepared to have a question like, hey, you know, you're applying for non-immigrant visa, but at the same time you have an immigrant petition. So which one is that? Are you planning to non-immigrate or are you planning to immigrate to the United States? Be prepared. I'm not saying that it's going to be all the time questions like this whenever you have an immigration petition, but be prepared for those trick questions. Um, and honestly, the best answer to this kind of questions is honesty. Just say, hey, yeah, I've been waiting for, since however long I've been waiting for my family reunification petition, I just want to go and, and see my family, you know, and having a M1 visa, I, I can do, you know, use it, to improve my English, to study a little bit in US, to see the US and see my family. So once my M1 expires, I'll come back. And then once I'll call, I'm called for the interview for an immigrant visa, I will come for an interview for an immigrant visa. So just be honest. Uh, but yes, absolutely, you can go ahead and, and apply for that. It, and like I said, I, I recommend it to really everyone who has a family reunification petition and you're waiting, go ahead and apply for a non-immigrant visa. I mean, Yes, it's, 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 it's time, it's, it's money investment, uh, but if you have that opportunity to do that, it, I think it is worth a shot because if you are, if you get the non-immigrant visa, then you get to go and, and be in the United States with your family while your family reunification petition is still pending. Okay, so let me pause the answer. 
Uh, just be prepared for the trick questions at the interview. That's, that's, just, that's just the way it is. Uh, moving further to Elizabeth1219. Elizabeth, thank you very much for being publicly subscribed. This is what this icon means. Really appreciate it. So Elizabeth says, hi, can I apply for asylum based on personal experience such as domestic matter? Thank you. Elizabeth, so... <clears throat> Whenever it comes to asylum, yes, in I would say in most cases it's going to be personal personal experience. Whenever it comes to the asylum applications, with domestic matter, however, it can go both ways. The answer is yes and no. Here's the thing: if it is specific to one single family, right, one single individual, and there is a way to avoid that issue that happened that exp that negative experience right that you're fleeing from and go to the authorities and ask them for help and then their involvement would resolve the situation or maybe potentially moving to another town all right or maybe to a nearby country if there are these options that are available you might have pr trouble proving here in the United States to, to an asylum officer that you will be getting doing the interview with proving that your you claiming asylum is necessary in the United States of America if, if you know what I mean at the same time there are situations where it is a personal experience and it is domestic situation but there is really no escape escape from that situation other than coming to the United States and staying in the United States and not going back. And in situations like this, why those situations happen? For example, if, you know, let's say a domestic, um, the person in a domestic partnership, the one who is uh, causing the problem, right, abusive situation, is a powerful man. You know, a man with an authority, a man in the government. And obviously, what can you do against a man like that? You can go and report it to police. What, is it really going to help? Probably not, because a man himself is in the government. The man himself may be you know, chief of police. Imagine, like, if, 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 if the situation is created by chief of police. Um, so, it's yes and no to answer your question. Um, what I'm trying to say is that if this is the situation and it is a personal experience and it is a domestic matter, you have to be prepared to show that there was absolutely no other way to avoid this situation other than coming to the United States and staying in the United States. And you have to show, demonstrate that if you do return back to the country where you came from, it's gonna be uh, it's it's dangerous. It's 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 dangerous. It's uh, you know it's it's gonna be a problem. So if you can't do that, then yes, absolutely. Uh, but be prepared because I mean, you, you know, whenever it comes to the to the asylum interviews, that's really the question that they ask. You know, is okay. So did you report this to police? Did you did you did you ask? your local authorities to intervene and, and help the situation? Did you try to get away from that situation, from that domestic matter? Did you try to move to another place, to move to another town? Did you try moving to another country that is nearby? Why didn't you consider moving to a, a bordering country or a country? Be prepared to answer those questions. If you can answer all those questions, and if you can, you know, then absolutely, absolutely. That's what asylum is for. Uh, it is for people that are requesting safe haven from, you know, from the situations that, that we experience. So Elizabeth, good, good luck with your situation. Uh, I hope my answer was helpful. If you have any questions along the way, you're always welcome to come back to this channel and ask them. And for everyone, if you're asking follow-up questions or if you're providing follow-up information, make sure you're posting it as a separate comment. Don't respond to my comment within your comment because YouTube does not send me these notifications. Okay, let's move on to the next one from Roxanne M. Roxanne M. Or Roxana McConnell. There you go, 665. My son will have his interview on this month. Awesome, congratulations. My questions, I'm a petitioner for my son and wife. Awesome, 
My grandkids now, she is 24 years, one is 11. But yesterday we submitted her interview time and was accepted. But today only show that she is not complete. Why? Okay, so I am having a little bit of problem understanding this, this uh, understanding your question. So your interview for your son was scheduled this month. And you're a petitioner, so for your son, I'm assuming. So since your son, you know, grandkids already, I'm assuming you know, one is 24 and one is 11, if I understand correctly. So you submit her, you said her, so I'm assuming your wife, because you're petitioning for your son and your wife. You submit her interview time and was accepted. So where did you submit her interview time? And because you, you don't submit the interview time anywhere, you don't submit it to NVC, you don't, and was accepted. Accepted by who? I definitely need some clarification because this is, I, I, I don't understand your, your question at all. Need clarification. clarification. This, this is what I'm going to type in here. And please clarify and, you know, again, for, for everyone, if you're asking a question, you, you have to keep in mind that, you know, I'm not in your situation. I'm not, a, you know, I'm, I myself am, am an immigrant. I've went through a lot of these things that we discussed on this channel. Um, but still, everybody's situation is unique. So if you can provide a little bit more details, that would be helpful. Okay, moving further to Amit Pokerel1751. My F2B visa category has a priority date of 22nd December 2015. Oh. So it's really close and it became documentarily qualified in August 2021. When can I expect the interview? My chargeability area is other chargeability area. Okay, so you are in all chargeability area, which is great. So let's take a look at F2B. And uh, right now we got September 2015. Okay, and you are in December 2015. So you are literally let's see september it's almost the end of september so we don't even need to count september so october november <clears throat> and then oh you're 22nd december so you're literally october november december three months you're exactly three months away from your immigrant visa becoming available from your priority date becoming current with that being said whenever it comes to the interview <clears throat> it really depends because Depending on which country you're in, depending on how busy the U.S. Embassy is in that country, you, you might be looking overall average, once your immigrant visa is available, it's about six months for, for the interview to be scheduled, uh, for you to get that notice of the interview. And the interview is always scheduled 30 days ahead. Uh, so keep that in mind. You're not going to know when your interview is scheduled up until 30 days before the actual interview date. Just keep that in mind. Uh, but yes, I would say you are probably looking. So three months from now, we are in October, November, December. I would say probably looking at the middle of 2024 for your interview. Uh, and w what you can do is obviously right now for you, it's definitely time to check the visa bulletin every single i mean check it every single month the new one comes out check it if you're not familiar with visa bulletin on this channel once the new visa bulletin comes out i do make a video talking about what changed which categories moved which chargeability areas moved uh, so if you're not subscribed can make sure to uh, subscribe to this channel um, and then once you see that your visible that your you know uh, priority date has been current on the visa bulletin for over two to three months, you can actually call your local U.S. Embassy and tell them that, hey, you know, my immigrant visa is already available, been available for the past couple months. I was wondering when my interview was scheduled for. And sometimes they tell you, sometimes they don't, but it's, you know, it's, it's worth a shot to, to, to give it a, you know, to give them a call and see if they can give you that interview date. But yes, you are uh, pretty close. You are really are almost there. But I would say by by the middle of 2024, I think you're gonna have your interview. Okay, let's move on to the next one from Dyer459. Hi, I want 30 documentary, documentary qualified in January 2023, 
but no updates yet prior date october 8 2021 location ethiopia dire 459 so in order to look up and tell you what's going on and give you rough estimates i definitely need the family preference category is it f1 f to B, F two A, F three, F four, depending on which one it is, you know, I, I I can take a look at the visa bulletin and let you know what's going on. So definitely need more information. If you can, please provide it. And I'm gonna type this up here. Uh, just make sure to respond to uh, don't respond to my comment within your comment. Um, post it as a separate comment, and I will be able to get it. Okay, let's uh, move on to the next question from Medluca6854. Hello, sir. It's an honor to contact you. Nah, Medluca, it's, it's, it's an honor to answer questions for you. I have a question. My green card was delayed for two months. What action should I take or wait longer? Okay, great question. So, if you have a delayed case, first of all, you need to make sure it is definitely delayed. And the way you do it is by checking the processing times for the case on the official usas.gov government website for u.s citizenship and immigration services so this is it right here you can find the link in the description below so from this home page you will click on tools then you will click on case status online right here click on that and you can put in your receipt number and it will tell you where in which stage of the process it is if you want to do that but we're going to scroll down and we're going to click on usas processing times so this will give us a new page so you will select the form you said it's a green card application so it i'm assuming either application to replace permanent resident permanent resident card or i-485 application to register permanent residence uh, so whichever it is, let's say it's I-90, form category, initial issuance or replacement, 10-year renewal. Again, just select the appropriate one. Select the service center. Sometimes it's more options. Sometimes it's just one option. And then check. Now, whenever it comes to the processing times, as you can see, it says here, 80% of cases are completed within 19 months, which means that there are still 20% of the cases that take either a little bit longer or a little bit shorter so don't just go by this but i would also recommend taking about 10 percent of this number and adding on top of it and waiting extra so for example roughly this is 20 months 10 percent is two months so wait two months over this and if you have been waiting for 21 months over total for for your application and you still have not heard there's still no updates then in that case what you do is from this page that we came from from the check case status there is a submit case inquiry over here click on this and it will give you an electronic version and the very first option here is case outside normal processing times so if you click on that it will open up a form that you will have to fill out with receipt number form number all your information here mailing address all that stuff last action taken on the case you can put whatever the last action is saying when you check the case status uh, for example if it says you know we've received your application it's still pending you can just paste that in here and then your you know email information and then security check and then submit usas most of the times they respond to inquiries like this with a very boilerplate useless response saying oh yeah it's still pending we're still working on it blah 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 so the reason why we're doing that is because if you do need to look into this further and maybe reach out for some additional help on your case like an attorney or elected officials you do want to show them that you try to resolve the issue yourself by using this case inquiry for uh, and it didn't work out because you got a boilerplate response without any answers to your question and now you are seeking additional help uh, so this is a very necessary step so if you do know for a fact that your application is outside of no normal processing times then this would be the very first step that you need to take is submit that case inquiry it is necessary uh, because you will have to show them that there you go I tried to submit an inquiry and they didn't really answer my question, so I am looking for help. So good luck with that, Medluka. Hopefully that helps. And uh, like I said, if it's not working out, 
then definitely come back to this channel and uh, I will be happy to address your issue further. Okay, moving further to the next question from Ben City Ben City Bay 8676. Hello sir, thank you for your time and your help with your videos. They're very helpful. I'm glad they're helpful. My question is, I pe I'm petitioning for my wife and she's living overseas in her country with our three kids. Our kids are already US citizens. Oh, awesome, perfect. So you don't have to worry about them. <laughs> nice. So I was wondering if I should fill out only one form I-864 for my wife. Yes, with our kids' names in it. Or one I-864 for each one of them. Thank you. Okay, no. So just one I-864 for your wife with, with the kids in it. Uh, and that's really it. And, and, and I'm assuming that's how you submitted your initial I-130. Just for your wife. And then obviously you put the kids in the application as well. Uh, just really for the informational purposes. Not that they need any kind of visas or anything like this. Because they are already US citizens. So it makes the process a lot easier. And that's the same exact thing that you're going to be doing with I-864. Just uh, for your wife. And then obviously kids. Kids are already already got everything set. It's, uh, it's like, gotta love it. That's good. Okay, let's move on to the next question from Biggs. Biggs, my C. Hi, sir. My final election date is 7 July 2007. Okay, so I'm assuming that's your priority date, not final election date. My category is F4, all chargeability area. My question is when my date will become current. Okay, so let's take a look. I'm pretty sure for F4. Priority date is somewhere in 2007, but let's take a look. So we're gonna be looking at graph A final action dates because I, I, would, I think you're already documentarily qualified and everything. So for F4 right now, it says 22nd April 2007 for all chargeability area. And you are in July 2007. So you are, let's see, April, well, it's almost end of April, but anyway, we'll count April, May, June, July. So you're roughly three, four months away from your priority date becoming current. That is, if we see the stable movement on the visa bulletin, because sometimes visa bulletin, it, 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 sometimes it moves in a good way, sometimes it moves in not a good way, sometimes it doesn't move at all. Okay, so again, for you, it is very, very important every single month, keep checking visa bulletin, and seeing what is happening. If this is moving for forward, that's good. If it's moving backward or not moving at all, not so good. So make sure to stay on top of the visa bulletin. Like I said, again, uh, I'm gonna repeat myself on this channel. I do make visa bulletin videos uh, where I go over all the movement and compare it to the previous visa bulletin editions. So make sure to stay on top of it, but yes, as of right now, roughly three, four months before your priority date becomes current and your immigrant visa becomes available. Okay, moving further to the next question. Looks like two comments. Looks like same thing, but let's read. From Danny Halili442. Good day, sir. Mine is F3. My priority date is October 2000. 2000. Are you? Oh, you're from Philippines. That's why. I was like, man. 2000 and documentarily qualified in November 2021 after I submitted documents and pay all the fees. I'm from Philippines. How long should I expect for my visa interview to be scheduled? Wow, Danny, I've, you've been waiting for a very long time. So let's take a look at the visa bulletin and see what's going on for the F3 for Philippines. We're going to be looking at the graph A again because Danny is documentarily qualified. So here's F3 for Philippines and it is showing June 2002. And Danny, you are in 2000, so your visa has been available, should have been available already for almost two years now. So I'm thinking you should have, your interview should be anywhere around the corner. In fact, I think your interview has already been scheduled. You just don't know it yet because, like I was mentioning earlier in this video, it's scheduled only 30 days you find out about the interview only 30 days before the actual interview. So for example, I'll just give you an example and make it easier. For example, let's say your interview was scheduled for January 2024. Let's say it's January 1st, 2024. You're not going to find out that it was scheduled for January, January 1st, 2024 until December 1st, 
2023, 30 days in advance. Sometimes in rare occasions, embassy, they send you the notification 60 days before the interview, but most of the times it is 30 days. The reason why they do it is because they want you to have 30 days for the medical examination. That's really the only reason. Uh, and there is a conversation uh, at the Department of State. They're trying to get rid of it. They, they're trying to make it six months, which will make it much nicer. Uh, but with that being said, Danny, I would definitely recommend calling the U.S. Embassy and I'm going to give you, let's see, U.S. Embassy.gov. So let's see, uh, in Philippines, I think it is in uh, Manila. Let me check. My geography is horrible. Yes, in Manila. Okay. Um, here it is. Here's their phone number. Give them a call. Let them know that say, hey, guys, you know, my, my immigrant visa was available for two, almost two years now. Uh, I wanted to see when my interview was scheduled for. Just be nice, you know, be professional on the phone. Don't be upset if they say, I'm sorry, we can't give you that information because a lot of times they say that. But unofficially, they can look into the system, they can check when it was scheduled for and they can tell you because it's not an official announcement. So sometimes they actually give that information over the phone. So it's worth a shot for you. But I'm pretty sure it was already scheduled and I am pretty sure it should be now around the corner because like I said, your immigrant visa has been available for quite a long time now. So I hope you can uh, figure that out and once you do finally get that announcement for your interview, please come back to this channel and, and, I, I, and let me know. I, honestly, I know a lot of people who are watching these videos, they would they like to see stuff like this too, like finally scheduled, finally granted, you know, resolutions. It's good to, for me too, I definitely enjoy reading the resolutions. I, I do, you know, I'm grateful for your questions, but the resolutions are, are good to hear as well. Okay, let's move on to the next question from Aron Asfaha. Aron Asfaha, 5925. Aron, thank you so much for being publicly subscribed. Really appreciate that. So Aron says, hi, sir. Thanks for having you that you give us more and precise information. So I would like to ask you that I'm a refugee in East Africa. My petition is I-130, family category of over 21 years of US citizen. So F1. My priority date is 09-2019 in all chargeability area. NVC already received my case from USAS on July 2023 for pre-processing. What are the next steps and how can I follow up the case? What am I going to do? Thank you. So Ar Aron, thank you so much for your question. So the next step, depending on which category you're, you're in, it, it, it can be either F1 or F3. F1, if you don't have any kids and unmarried, well, sorry, if you are unmarried and over 21, which you are over 21, so either F1, or if you're married, then it's going to be F3, all right? So whether you do have kids or, or don't, it doesn't matter. Um, but um, the next step is, since the case is already with NDC, the next step is to wait for the welcome letter from NDC, them opening up the portal for you so that you can start your documentary qualification process. Now, depending on whether you are in F1 or F3, we're gonna take a look at the visa bulletin we're looking at the graph B now, dates for filing. And this is the graph that shows us when the NVC portal is opening up for you to start documentary qualification process. So if you are F1, right now, people with the priority date in September 2017, their portals are opening up. So you are in 09-2019, and so you're exactly two years away. So roughly you have two more years before your NEC portal opens up so that you can start your documentary qualification process. And that is if you are in F1. If you are in F3, it is a lot longer. So I, I, I'm gonna assume that you're in F1, hopefully. If you're not in F1, let me know in, in a separate comment and we're gonna talk about the F3. But if you're in F1, two years before NEC portal opens up. Once it opens up, you have your documentary qualification process, which is submitting a few forms, submitting a few documents, financial documents, sponsorship documents. I do have a video on this channel. It's called Documentarily Qualified. What does that mean? 
check it out in that video i show the nvc portal the actual nvc portal that was already documentarily qualified so you can see all of the fees that need to be paid all of the forms that need to be submitted all of the documents that need to be submitted um, you still have a little bit of time before kind of looking into that and collecting all of the documents that are required so i would say you know give it a little bit more time before actually looking into it but if you are you know if you want to be prepared and it's good if there's nothing wrong with that if, if you want to be prepared really really ahead of time then yeah go ahead check out that video and start collecting all the documents little by little uh talk to the petitioner because petitioner will have to be the main sponsor and make sure you know that they have all of their documents that they need financial tax returns tax trap transcripts all the w-2s 1099s all of that sort of stuff that's what will need to be submitted to the uh nvc so you can start working uh on that so thank you very much everyone for uh, asking your questions hopefully my answers were helpful today if you have any follow-up questions like i said just make sure to post them in a separate comment don't respond to my comment within your comment because youtube does not send me the notifications for those uh, so thank you very much everyone for uh, for your time god bless and i'll see you all in the next video